Now that we have practiced drawing organic compounds in expanded, condensed, and skeletal forms, we need to learn how to name them. Historically, organic compounds were named by the chemists who discovered them, and in other cases, the names reflected the source of the compound. As the number of compounds discovered increased, and after synthesizing so many other compounds, historical names are not longer practical. According to IUPAC, a name will have a suffix that indicates what is the major or principal family group or functional group. You also will have a parent or root that it determines how many carbons are present in the molecule or how long is the hydrocarbon chain. You will also have a prefix that is determining the position of the substituents or the alkyl groups present, and also a locant that is determining where is the primary functional group present. When naming any substance by the IUPAC rules, we need to be able to recognize these prefaces. Meth will always indicate one carbon, eth for two carbons, prop for three carbons, but for four carbons, and so on. But it's important to know that these prefaces will be used for all different substances. When naming an unbranched alkane, as this one, we need to always count how many carbons long we have, use one of these prefaces according to how long is the hydrocarbon, and place the end A-N-E. Like in this example, we have five carbons long, that will be the prefix pent, and the end for the family name, if we are increasing by one carbon, is hexane, heptane, and so on. Small substances can be named following IUPAC rules or using trivial or common names. For instance, butane is a straight alkane that is four carbons long and it has an isomer, isobutane, which is three carbons long and it has one branch. Before we name more complex alkanes, we need to define an alkyl group as the part of the molecule that branches off the longest hydrocarbon chain. An alkyl group is usually represented by the letter R, and you can think about it as the rest of the molecule. There are four types of carbons and three types of alkyl groups. When a carbon is bonded to only one carbon, we call that a primary carbon. If the carbon is bonded to two carbons, that will be a secondary carbon. And if three carbons are bonded to this carbon, I will say it's a tertiary carbon. And when the carbon has no hydrogens bonded, but only carbons all around, it will be called a quaternary carbon. We can see in this molecule that we have a secondary carbon. This is in the middle of butane. Butane will have two end carbons with three hydrogens, so those are two primary carbons. In this molecule, the second one, we can see a tertiary carbon here, and one, two, three primary carbons. This one is a secondary carbon as well as the one in butane. These two are secondary carbons because they are bonded to two carbons. And in the last case, we have one quaternary carbon because this carbon is bonded to, two to four carbons. One, two, three, four carbons. There is a misconception that frequently the students have, and that is when assigning it what type of carbon you guys observe, you only need to consider what is the number of carbon attached to the one that is being analyzed. For example, I will say that this carbon is a primary carbon, it does not matter if we have a chain of two carbons or 20 carbons. This carbon is still a primary carbon because it has three hydrogens bonded. This one is a secondary carbon. It doesn't matter that I have a chain here of many carbons. As long as I see a two 
hydrogen is bonded to the carbon directly, that will be a secondary carbon. Same thing for a tertiary carbon. We know this one is a tertiary carbon because directly attached to this carbon we have three carbons. It doesn't matter the length of this hydrocarbon chain and of course this one is a quaternary carbon. The simplest branches or alkyl groups are formed by removing a hydrogen from a primary carbon on a parent straight chain alkane and replacing the A and E ending of that alkane for the YL. For example, if we have the molecule of methane, it changes to methyl when we remove one hydrogen. Ethane, by replacing one hydrogen, removing one hydrogen, it becomes ethyl. If we have hexane, the alkyl group becomes hexyl. It is very important that you guys remember that these are alkyl groups part of a larger molecule. These are no substances. These are not compounds. Here we have the sequence of unbranched alkanes that will have physical properties and they will have uh, reactions such as chlorination reaction. But these ones are just part of a larger molecule. Here we have, for example, hexol. That means it's a primary alkyl group from hexane. We have pentol that is an alkyl group from pentane, butyl, that is the primary alkyl group coming from butane. We have propyl, that is coming from 3-carbon propane, ethyl, that is coming from ethane, and methyl, that is coming from methane.